you will be shocked at how happy you are and how wonderful your life is. How many more women look at you and are attracted to you when you kill fucking meat and you protect the fucking tribe. You will be shocked at how. This is like funny, but Apologize not funny. Apologize for being late. My wife just died. We've got a lot on the agenda today, so let's begin. Yes, Matthew? Hey, I'm so sorry. I'm your wife. Yeah, well, as you might expect, the pain's unlike anything I've ever experienced before, but uh, got a lot to do today, so let's keep moving, okay? Maura? I'm so sorry to hear that, sir. Jane was really wonderful. Yes, I can confirm that, but Maura, I actually made a pledge to the president and to the people of the United States to keep the nation informed as to the activities of its leader. Do you need anyone to talk to or someone to help you with anything? People, this subject is not on the agenda today. Believe me, there's nothing I'd like more than to drop down behind this podium and weep. But I can't do this. Why? Because I'm a grown man. I've got a job to do and so do you. It's funny, <laughs> right? Not real, is it? Uh, huh? Is this real? No. No. Uh, but, but, but here's the, here's the yeah, thing, though. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Time out. <laughs> Tristan asked this, is this real? Because this is kind of what it's like being a man. It's plausible, This is a, the sure. thing that you, that lady, because it's a plausible thing. There's this thing that ladies, are like a lot of times, it's not just ladies, it's some people who, we have the ability and the luxury of like drinking mimosas and <laughs> thinking about our feelings, watching our favorite TV show and going to therapy because there are men like that that no matter how they feel, they have to go work their, they have to walk their beat. As a police officer, they're willing to go storm Normandy Beach, or they're willing to stay up all night to make sure the construction is done for the bridge or the skyscraper or whatever is happening, or people who keep the lights and the electricity and the water running. Those people, when their wife dies, they still have to can go to work. I, yeah. I think it's hard to explain. One thing happened when my dad died, I was 29 years old, and I called Major Robinson, who was my flight commander, and I said, Major Robinson, you know, I got a flight in two days, whatever, uh, I'll still do the flight, and then I'm gonna go home for the funeral. And he had to stop me, and he was like, because this is a regulation in the in the military, and he goes, Sartain, you're not gonna fucking fly? Like, your dad just died, we're not gonna let you fucking fly. And it was crazy, he didn't say it like that, but uh, it was one of these situations where it was like, in my mind, because I am around men who are like this, the idea of me missing a flight, and by the way, I deployed right after my dad's funeral to, to the Middle East. The idea of missing that because something bad happened. Uh, there's a great movie you guys should check out. It's called The Covenant. It's Guy Ritchie's The Covenant, and it stars Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, and it's terrific because these two, look, because the two main characters, one of them saves the one of them's life, and the other one saves the other one's life, but they don't, there's no affection between the two of them at all. They never shake hands or come into physical contact hardly at all during the entire movie. And when you come to the realize, like, we as men, we have this thing where we have to keep our promise and be accountable for our actions no matter how we can feel, which is why I think most therapy doesn't work for men because therapy has to always keep in mind that I have to pay the bills and I have to, it's like I'm having a hard time dealing with what my wife's doing and I'm having some internal emotions, but someone's broken into my house and I don't feel like getting the shotgun. No, I always, but I always have to get the shotgun. Friends you know with shotguns, yes. I have a question. <laughs> That's right. My question is, um, and I don't exactly know how to phrase it. So I've heard many men say that, oh, they like, they're more attracted to mothers. Mm. Could you, do you think that, because as a mother, I feel the same way. Before I had a child, I didn't feel that way. I did whatever mm -hmm. the fuck I wanted, when I wanted, how I wanted. But now I have a child, like no matter what, I have to be, and she's getting older, she's almost six. So she's recognizing and repeating behaviors and seeing like she, she can read the room with sure. what mom's going through, what I've got going on. So I have to compartmentalize a lot of things, no matter what. Ever since the day she was born, I have to get up. I feel like mothers have similar mm. outlooks on life mm -hmm. where you got to get up and get it done. like. You have to, yes. and you have to mask some of the, the emotions and things like that to protect your child and their emotions and their, yeah. you know, reaction. Do you feel like that could be possibly why some men are more attracted to mothers? Because there's a sense of responsibility there. You're about they single mothers. Well, you're talking about attracted single mothers or women who are motherly. What are you talking about here? I think or the mother fetish because it's <laughs> that too. That's a, that's actually that's where, I was, going with this. Yes, that's where I was going. That's where I was going. No, all right, I think right. um, mothers, just mothers in general. I don't necessarily mean oh i guess single mothers because you're not going to date somebody that's no are you talking about motherly characteristics or women who i mean ha have legitimate mothers. like yeah Already. like children yeah i, I, I don't, I, to I, I don't think not, they I haven't, I haven't seen any i haven't seen any data showing that men are more attracted to women who already have kids so. i don't know if that's like some big majority thing yeah. it's just something i've heard often yeah. and i'm like oh that's i could i could like definitely that. i could definitely see uh going out with a woman and seeing that she's good to her son and that being a positive i don't know if it mm -hmm. makes you more sexually attracted to her but i definitely can see well okay well, this woman's probably not a Psychopath. She's willing to do anything to protect her child. That's actually admirable. I'm just wondering because the characteristics you say that I mean the thought process that men have. Well, what, it's what very I'm saying similar is there, to, there, there, yeah. there seems to be. Well, my, the point I'm just trying to make is there seems to be this pull for men to be 
to express themselves emotionally, to become more vulnerable, and but to do it in the way that women do it, a more like a feminine way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my point is, we don't even have this discussion <clears throat> except for the fact that a society was built with air conditioners, skyscrapers, in cars, dishwashers, dishwashers. <laughs> this whole society was created by men who actually needed to repress their feelings so that the job would get done. What I'm saying is we're privileged by those men. The one, the guy you just saw here, my wife just died, but I still have a job to do. And so do you, those men are the reason why we have the privilege of even having the conversation that we're having right now. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think that also has to do with academia too, because like just being in psychology, it's mostly women. Yeah. You kind of see that like most therapy is designed to treat women and they don't, it's like offensive to say that you need to treat men and women differently because the treatment would be different. So I, if you said this on a podcast, I think last yeah. week it was like, yeah. Like I, I'm fine with a therapist. She understands. She needs to understand though. Like the bill needs to get paid, yes. or like the kids need to take for sure. care. Men of. Needs for sure. Men need strength coach. For sure. It's exactly. like it's like whatever you're doing for women, that's fine. But with men, you must always remember we have a burden of performance. Right. A lot of women have a burden of performance too. Like she said, as a mother, that burden of performance makes sure her child is taken care of. For sure. A, a woman who's a squadron commander, a woman who's a female pilot, they have a burden of performance. A lot of women don't have the same burden of performance as a man does, but. All men have a burden of performance. Uh, okay. Our right. value with regards to the opposite sex or with regards to people who want to work with us, work for us, or our respectability comes from our burden of performance because we don't have big boobies. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so we all, so whereas some women have a burden of performance, all men have a burden of performance. Mike, a gynomastia was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we don't. We don't have a. Yeah, but for you to have that, you'd have to acknowledge that men and women are different. Correct. And that is the problem. And that correct. was offensive and to a lot of and people. That, well, I mean, that was like the basis of the discussion we had last week, which was like, oh, men need to go to therapy more. Yeah, he's like, no, he's, we don't. He's not talking about you guys, yeah. you ladies. Tristan's not, not talking guys. about you guys. He's talking about the psychological academic, yeah. the academicians that are hyper liberal and woke. I, you know, I, go ahead. I was going to say, now look, if you're having like anxiety issues at home like and I, uh, I think people overuse the word I'm anxious I have anxiety mm -hmm. right but if you're really having like breakdowns and you're crying and something's going on Yes, go see a therapist. Yes, but but here's the reason why you have to go see a therapist because your anxiety is broken is breaking your performance. Yes, does that make sense? Yes. So because you can't perform for sure, I have friends that have suffered from PTSD. Those people do need to go to therapy. But the reason why they need to go to therapy is because they're broken living on the street because they could not meet their burden of performance. Right. Yes. The number of homeless men versus homeless women. It is it is. Huge the number of homeless men versus homeless well, that's women. That's why we have like athletic psychologists. Like so if you're like if somebody's in your head or whatever, you you are like not in the right place mentally and you can't like perform as far as, you know, your sports or athletics or whatever else that is. There are I mean, there's literally a branch of psychology for sports, you yeah. know, yeah. for sports psychologists. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Sports like ninety percent of these men these men do not need therapy. Stop letting your girlfriend tell you you need a therapist. Hear that, Jesse okay. Press. So do, do you guys you know what you need <laughs> instead of a therapist? You need a performance coach. Go watch go watch Billions. You remember Bobby Axelrod had uh, Wendy Rhodes in there? And Wendy Rhodes was not interested in like your psychological health. You needed to perform. You'd be shocked how good your mental energy will be and how much your brain will reward you when you kill the fucking meat and protect the fucking tribe. You will be shocked at how happy you are and how wonderful your life is and also how, ma how many more women look at you and are attracted to you when you kill the fucking meat and you protect the tribe you will be shocked at how all of a sudden that's therapy a guy is like i'm lonely and but all of a sudden he has sex with a beautiful woman and he has a beautiful girlfriend all of a sudden he didn't need therapy he didn't need any fucking <laughs> therapy did he he, he just had sex intimacy. with a beautiful woman he needs some intimacy and all of a sudden all that it is gone. Now it's, his head's in the right Isn't place. it weird how that worked? <laughs> it's like objective reality changed and got better for him because he accomplished a goal, and then all of a sudden he doesn't need fucking therapy anymore. Isn't it weird how that works? Something totally different and weird, but I heard that somewhere over in Europe, if you're like um, on disability, part of that disability check is allowed to be used for prostitutes. Yes, what? Uh, that is. Hold on, what's what country is that? That it's is like so Denmark. cool. Is it Denmark? It's Denmark. It's Denmark it's or, one or, of the uh, Scandinavian countries. Right what, you're, what you're saying is absolutely true. Yes, that's the coolest thing because yes, that's the coolest thing. <laughs> that's the coolest thing. Shout yeah. out to Perump. <laughs> Shout out to Perump. Yeah, go get some puss, dude. By the way, we, we had a girl who was going to come on. We had a girl who was going to come on the show today. Show today, no lie, but she's stuck out in Perump at Mustang Ranch until next week. Uh, oh, and she's going to come no. out here. Yes. Oh, I would like to meet her. Yes, I'll introduce you guys to her. Yeah.
Okay. Can we do? Uh, can Who we do? That? Can we do? 